Today's Love Dare, Day 16, Love Intercedes. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Three, third John, Chapter 2. You cannot change your spouse as much as you may want to. You cannot play God and reach into their heart and mold them into what you want them to be. But that's what most couples spend a large part of their time trying to do, change their spouse. And Sandy has been described as doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But isn't that what happens when you try to change your mate? It's, frustra it's frustration at the highest level. At some point you have to accept that it's not something you can do, but there's here's what you can do. You be, can become a wise farmer. You can become a wise farmer. A farmer can, cannot make a seed grow into a fruitful crop. He cannot argue, manipulate, or demand it to bear fruit, but he can plant the seed into fertile soil, give it water, nutrients, protect it from weeds, and then turn it over to God. Millions of farmers have made a livelihood from this process over the centuries. They know that not every seed sprouts, but most will grow when planted in proper soil, proper soil, and give what they need. Give them what they need. There is no guarantee that anything in this book will change your spouse. But that's not what this book is about. It's about you, you daring to love. If you take the love dare seriously, there is a high like likelihood that you will be personally changed from the inside out. And if you carry out each dare, your spouse will likely be affected and your marriage will begin to bloom in front of your eyes. It may take weeks, it may even take years, but regardless of the soil you're working, you're working with, you are to plan for success. You are to get the weeds out of your marriage. You are to nurture the soil of your, your mate's heart and then depend on God for the results. But you won't be able to do this alone. You'll need something that is more powerful than anything else you have, and that is effective prayer. Prayer really does work. It is a spiritual phenomenon created by an ultimate, powerful God, and it's yielding yields amazing results. Do you feel like giving up on your marriage? Jesus said to pray instead of quitting. Luke 18.1 Are you stressed out and worried? Prayer can bring peace to your storm. Philippians 4.67 Do you need a major breakthrough? Prayer can make the difference. Acts 12, 1 through 17. God is sovereign. He does things his way. He is not a genie in a lamp that submits to your every wish, but he does love you and desire an intimate relationship with you. This doesn't happen apart from prayer. There are some key elements that must be in place for prayer to be effective, but surf suffice it to say that prayers works best when you're coming from a humble heart. That is in the right relationship with God and others. The Bible says, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. James 5.16 Have you ever wondered why God gives you overwhelming insight into your spouse's hidden faults? Do you really think it's for endless nagging? No. It is for effective kneeling. No one knows better how to pray for your mate than you. Has your scolding or nagging been working? The answer is no, because that's not what changes a heart. It is time to try talking to God in your prayer closet instead. A husband will find that good can fix his wife a lot better than he can. That God can fix his wife. A wife will accomplish more through strategic prayer than from all her persuasive efforts. It is also a much more pleasant way to live. So turn your complaints to prayers and watch the master work while you keep your hands clean. If your spouse doesn't have any type of relationship with God, then it's clear what you need to start praying for. Beyond this, God, begin to pray for exactly what your mate needs. Pray for his heart. Pray for her attitude. Pray for your spouse's responsibilities before God. Pray for the truth to replace lies. Pray that forgiveness would replace bitterness. Pray for a genuine breakthrough in, in your marriage, and then pray for your heart's desire for love and honor to become the norm. Pray for romance and intimacy to go to a deeper level. One of the most loving things you can ever do for your spouse is to pray for them.
Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Matthew 7, 7. Today's dare. Begin praying today for your spouse's heart. Pray for three specific areas where your desire for God to work in your spouse's life and in your marriage. Check here when you complete today's dare. Have you experienced the power of prayer in the past? What did you choose to pray about? What is Was it easy for you? Did it feel foreign to you? You know, yesterday I didn't do an after video um, where I talk about the book a little bit and my own interactions with Tanya, and that's because yesterday I was really busy, um, at least in the morning time. And Tanya brought that up to me. It's like, I watched your videos. You didn't do any after talk afterwards. And I was like, well, I didn't feel like it. And I was busy yesterday. I did two videos and somehow feed the cats and get out by 740. Just like, I'll need to soon. But, um... One of the things I did when me and Tanya started dating again is I prayed for God's will. She's meant to be, let it be. If it's not, then please get her out of my life because I cannot go through another heartbreak again. And she stayed in my life and then I started praying for her salvation and praying that God uses me to bring her to Christ. And he did. He did just that. And it was extremely inspirational to see me just love on Tanya and sharing her my my testimony what God's done in my life and things I've gone through and she realized at one point she saw how happy I was and she was like I want that how are you so happy despite everything that's happened to you you lost your car your job you, you lost basically your your life <laughs> in a lot of ways and yet somehow you're able to bounce back and still be your normal goofy self and I'm I told her how and why, and she's like, I want that. <laughs> and so we started watching a lot of the Kendrick Brothers films together, and we just watched The Shack recently, and God's been working on her heart, and it's been a beautiful journey. And right now, my biggest prayer for her is to help her work through her attitudes and her um, need to burst out react overly aggressive on some stuff in our life and we just literally decided this happened yesterday and Tuesday night after young adults after I almost drowned and I love Tanya to death I really do but my prayer is that God will just keep working on her heart and keep bringing her closer to him and I have no desire to try to fix her I have no desire to play the role of God I'd rather let God work on her like he has been and just love on her and be there and be supportive, you know. There's some days where I'm not perfect and I, I lash out myself at her. But it's a work in progress. And I, I'm seeing the progress, you know. They say that it, it gets worse before it gets better. <laughs> so she feels safe enough with me now that she can actually be like this around me. Unlike other people, she can't do that around me. So she's better at hiding it. And since she's around me, now she feels safe that she can now reveal her hurt. And I feel nothing but love and respect for the woman. That she trusts and loves me that much. That she feels that she can she can show me her dark sides. And every time she shows it, I show her love and compassion while holding her accountable for her actions. And not attacking her or belittling her for her outburst of anger. And I love her. I do pray for her quite a lot. God puts her on my heart. I just literally prayed on, God put her on my heart while I was at work two days ago. And I don't know why. I did not until she told me that around the time that I was praying, she was on the phone with her dad, by dad, discussing you know, the marriage and everything. And I was just like, wow, okay, that, that's how that works. And just seeing God just transform my prayer life, my relationship with Him, and also my attitude of how a lot of things have been changing lately. Anyway, I gotta get going. I literally have one minute to feed cats and put my shoes on and leave. So, thanks for watching this little after video.